Hi, I'm Michael Schiffer, Program Officer at the Stanley Foundation, and we'd like to talk to you about the Foundation's new project on Rising Powers. I'm Nina Hachikian, and I co-chair the Stanley Foundation's Rising Powers Task Force. My name is Mona Sutphin, and I'm co-chair of the Stanley Foundation's Rising Power Task Force. The global order is changing. Something new is happening on the world's political landscape. The global order. What does it mean? To what we see in the news, the world doesn't seem very orderly. Going back through 500 years of history, we can see how world politics have been organized. Who's been up and who's been down? In 1648, the Treaty of Westphalia was the first attempt to structure how nations dealt with each other. The Congress of Vienna in 1819 added even more rules to the global order. In fact, we still follow many of them today. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles and the League of Nations failed as attempts to reorganize the world. Then came World War II. The war ended with the United States in a new position of strength, and the war's victors created a number of new institutions to provide structure to international relations. These included the United Nations, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and more. But the war also gave birth to what foreign policy experts call a bipolar world. The United States and its allies joined together as one set of powerful forces, while the Soviet Union and its allies formed another. The global order for most of the late 20th century was defined by this Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 ended the Cold War and led to a unique circumstance where the United States was the world's only superpower, what some call a unipolar world. Since then, almost by default, the United States has held a certain, although limited, amount of dominance over world affairs. But nearly two decades later, experts are wondering, how long can this unipolar moment last? Or if it has already ended. And perhaps more importantly, they are asking, what will come next? The 21st century will almost certainly be marked by many competing sources of global power. Across politics, economics, culture, military strength, and more, a new group of countries has growing influence over the future of the world. Some call it a multipolar world. Others say power will be so spread out, it could become more of a nonpolar world. Whichever way the world goes, managing the transition is very important. 500 years of history tells us that when a dominant power is faced with the rapid rise of another nation, things do not go smoothly. Think about the rise of Germany in the First World War, or Japan in the Second World War. Today, a number of reports, like this one, and books like this one have been written about how to best manage this current moment in world history. Rising Powers, The New Global Reality is a Stanley Foundation project aimed at raising awareness, stimulating new thinking, and improving U.S. foreign policy at this important moment in history. Our aim is to discuss several of the countries challenging the global order, major issues which cut across national boundaries, and how all of this will impact American lives. You can see it on the web at risingpowers.org. As the site evolves, we're adding information about Brazil, India, China, Russia, Turkey, South Africa, South Korea, Japan, the European Union, and others. Each country tells a different story about the emerging world. And each story makes a compelling case that old ways of thinking about how the world is organized seem less and less relevant today. We also have background information on big issues that are already undergoing serious changes in this new world. Issues like energy security, nuclear nonproliferation, global and regional systems, and non-state actors add urgency to this discussion. We also ask a very important question. What will this changing global order mean for the United States? Some say the United States should do whatever it takes and spend whatever is needed to remain the dominant force in the world. Others believe that some kind of violent clash between America and other nations or civilizations has all been inevitable. But there is another path. Being the world's only superpower has substantial benefits, but it is not enough to make us secure. With all our strength, we still can't stop the biggest threats facing us today. Disease, global climate change, nuclear proliferation, terrorism, illegal drugs, and more. Ignore borders and traditional defense systems. These threats can only be tackled by countries working together. As this new world unfolds, America will increasingly need other nations, and they will need us in order to build a better future. A strategy of trying to maintain dominance over every country in every situation around the world is ultimately counterproductive to the very cooperation most needed in this new world. Leadership and cooperation in this moment require understanding the world as it really exists. And that is what we hope to accomplish with these materials online and in this kit. We aim to spark dialogue and new thinking. We hope this effort will cause you to question how politicians, policymakers, the news media, and others talk about America's role in the world. 
and we hope you will give us your feedback as well. By sending your comments and questions to risingpowers at stanleyfoundation.org.